So Kevin McManaman, what a legend, what a hero, what an icon of Dublin football. I mean, one of the greatest Dublin footballers of the modern era, potentially one of the greatest Dublin footballers of all time. And not in terms of ability, in terms of natural ability, I mean, you'd prob- there's a number of footballers you'd probably put ahead of Kevin Mack. I mean, you'd look at Bernard Brogan, you'd probably even look at Alan Brogan, Jeremy Connolly, Con O'Callaghan, Brian Fenton, etc, etc. The list goes on and on and on. But Kevin McManaman, for what he gave to Dublin football, for what he'd done for Dublin football, the big goals, the big moments, I mean, he will go down in history as one of the all-time goats of Dublin football. I mean, he will go down as one of the all-time legends, in my opinion. He put out a statement on Wednesday on Twitter and also on Instagram. He said, fair to sweet, Anna Liffey, time to hang up the boots. Thanks for all the memories. Really excited for the next chapter and you know even the opening statement there fair to fairly well sweet Anna Liffey I mean that is a famous uh, you know saying in Dublin football going back to the rare old times as they say and the fact he even uses that in his retirement probably embodies how much of a Dublin man that he is and how much he has embodied Dublin football over the years and I will try out some tweets as I'm discussing Kevin McManaman, I'm discussing my own memories and we'll read out some tweets of course as well. And if my voice does sound a little bit uh, all over the place, I am just a little bit under the weather as they say, the man flew, all the rest. But um, I wasn't going to make this video but I thought, you know what, Kevin McManaman, he's just, a, he's too much of a legend in my opinion. And look, I don't always make retirement videos for people or I, I don't always make videos when players retire and whatnot because, you know, there's so many retirements all the time but... For a player like Kevin McManaman, like, he is one of the all-time goats. And he's probably, you know, he's up there as one of my favourite footballers ever. And, look, that's obvious coming from a Dublin fan. I mean, you know, if you're a Kerry fan, if you're a Mayo fan, you're probably not going to want to watch this video. And I completely understand if you want to completely switch off. And, you know, you're probably delighted with this news in, in many ways. Although, I think Kevin McManaman's best years were behind him at this stage. And that's no disrespect to Kevin Mack. I mean... Like, like he is getting a lot older, and I do think Dublin football should be looking more towards some of the younger lads. Although, to be fair, like I honestly do believe if Kevin Mack was available last year, look, I'm not going to say we would have got over the line against Mayo an extra time, but you just never know. He would have added maybe an extra 5 to 10% that Dublin didn't have an extra time. Let's not forget in that game, Dublin didn't score uh, an extra time. Let's not, as far as I remember, anyways. So, um, you know, if Kevin Mack was there, maybe he might have added something. I don't know, but look, that's a. That's a discussion for a different day and certainly we won't delve too much into that. But look, in terms of Kevin McManaman as a Dublin man, I mean, you know, there was a tweet that came in here. Kevin McManaman was the father of Dublin's revolution. His 2011 goal versus Kerry was the spark that lit a fire that became a decade-long inferno. A goal that triggered the most thunderous noise inside Croker. A giant of the hill, one of the good guys, king of the mandolin, retires. And that was from Roy Curtis. Um, yeah, and I completely agree with that. I think that tweet probably sums it up best for, for Kevin McManaman. I mean, you know, I was kind of thinking and I was chatting to one of my friends um, when this news got announced and I was kind of thinking like, where would Dublin have been without Kevin McManaman? Would they have got over the line and won the 2011 All-Ireland? We never know. I mean, maybe someone else might have stepped up. Dublin have so many great players, you know, maybe someone else would have been the one to step up. But you think he he got that goal in, in 2011, I mean, and, and look, I've only been to one All-Ireland final, and unfortunately, you know, I haven't been able to get tickets to any of the other ones, Um, you know, and the 2011 All-Ireland final, I mean, oh God, like what, what an atmosphere, what a moment on the hill, there's only one other atmosphere that I've been to that's ever eclipsed that, and that was Liverpool against Manchester City in uh, in, in 2014, you remember the, the Stephen Gerrard, this does not slip now moment, I was at that game, and I'm going to be honest, Literally, the atmosphere was so good at that game, I, I couldn't hear myself speak for about an hour after I came outside Anfield. It was genuinely incredible. The atmosphere was almost too good that it actually, you were almost frightened to be in there. But, um, I mean, that's a story for a different day. But Kevin Mc, that, that 2011 all on a final, that was number two, and without doubt number two, because when that goal goes in, I mean, Crow Park just shook. It was... It was something I've never, ever experienced before, in all honesty. Like, literally, I, I was up kind of near the back of the hill. I'm, no word of a lie, I ended up in the middle, nearby the front, when that after that goal went in. And I was like, how? I don't know how I've ended up here. My phone, like, I, I lost my phone because it just, you know, it threw the celebrations, it just flew somewhere. And to be honest, I didn't even care. I didn't even care on the slides. I didn't even think about my phone. I didn't even notice I'd lost it until the game had finished. And I was like, wait, where's my... Where's my phone? And, you know, kind of kind of cra- crazy moment, incredible moment. And, you know, it came at a time when 
Dublin hadn't won an All Ireland in sixteen years. Dublin had been the, I suppose, you know, the, the the media darlings of Gaelic football. I don't even know if that's the right term, but the side that, you know, the overachievers of Gaelic football. That's probably the the right term. We had all the the right ingredients. We had all the players. We played our, the majority of our games in Crow Park. You know, we had a, a fully packed Crow Park Stadium. We had Hill Sixteen. You know, that's full of Dublin fans. We'd, we we were doing everything right. We had all the resources. We were doing all the right steps to, to win All-Irelands. But there was one thing we weren't doing and winning All-Irelands. And as a matter of fact, we weren't even getting to All-Ireland Finals. And Kevin Mack was a vital cog in that jigsaw that got Dublin over the line in 2011. Because another another game that goes unspoken, actually, was the semi-final against Donegal. He came off the bench against Donegal. Um, a horrible game to watch, without doubt. It was, it was an awful game to be at. Um, but Kevin Mack came off the bench and he made it made a difference. He won a couple of frees, he kicked a couple of points as well, coming off the bench at half time, and he made a big, big difference in that game. And it was the same in twenty eleven. He came off the bench, got that goal at a time where Kerry were I mean Kerry didn't win the All Ireland the year previous, but they'd won it in two thousand nine. They absolutely battered Dublin along the way. They were the dominant force in Gaelic football at that moment in time, no question about it. I know Cork won the All Ireland the year previous, but Kerry were the team. Yes, they were slightly aging and whatnot, and you know they, they went on to win the All Ireland in, in twenty fourteen. That's obviously the last All Ireland that they've won, of course. But you would have expected Kerry to have seen that game through. Kevin Mack gets that goal. Kevin Nolan hits the point after it, and uh, Stephen Cluxon obviously scores the winner. You know with the last kick of the game, we, the rest is all history. But as I was saying before, like Kevin Mackey, twenty thirteen, that goal as well. Like I was. I was at that game as well. It wasn't on the hill. I was on the the Nally stand, but um, I mean that goal was was unbelievable as well, wasn't it? And like that, I think a lot of people do say that the 2013, 2013 atmosphere was probably better because it was a semi final. There was you know a lot more sort of um, regular fans that would get to have gone to that game rather than all Ireland finals. As we know, all Ireland finals sometimes there's a lot of people that go to all Ireland finals that aren't even GA fans or so to say but again probably a discussion for another day and 2013 the atmosphere was unbelievable if Kevin Mack gets that goal if you know if, if, if there was no Kevin Mack would we have came over against 2013 2015 Kevin Mack comes off the bench as well against Mayo makes a huge impact in in that replay um, gets obviously the goal of course as well like you know and you think back to these moments and Dublin won the All Ireland in 2011 2013 2015 if there was no Kevin Mack would Dublin have gotten over the line in those games? You just never know. Would Dublin have won the six in a row? You just never know. I mean, would someone else have stepped up? Would you know? Dublin have so many great players all across the country. You'd have to say that at some point they would have broken the duck. They would have won a couple of All Irelands in a row. But would it have been as dominant as it is now if it hadn't have been for Kevin Mack? I'm not too sure. And you know, I think the role Kevin Mack has played for Dublin behind the scenes as well, even in 2020. You know, coming off the bench a couple of times, making a bit of a difference. A great experienced player to have there for some of the younger lads coming through. And I'm sure the experience of having a player like Kevin Mack in the dressing room was huge for players like Con O'Callaghan and Brian Fenton and Noel Scully when they started to burst through. So, look, you know, without doubt for me, one of my favourite all-time Dublin footballers, one of my favourite all-time Gaelic footballers, um, you know, 2011. You know, you just you can't eclipse that as, as a Dublin fan, I think as a... A Dublin fan, I don't think we'll ever get better than that, which sounds kind of sad in some ways because of how dominant we've been over the past six or seven years. Unless Dublin were to go on a, you know, a drought of ten to fifteen years without winning an All Ireland, and then you know something similar was to happen again. But even at that, it still wouldn't eclipse twenty eleven because it was the first time in my lifetime that I experienced that as a Dublin fan. So, and we'll just run through some tweets here quickly. So, John O'Brien says, "The man, the myth, the legend. Thanks for some great memories, Kev. The roar from the hill when the ball hit the net in twenty eleven will live with me forever, up the dubs. Yeah, I mean, like even when you go back and listen to that goal or watch that goal, the noise of the ball hitting the net and the roar, I think that was the loudest roar in Crow Park ever. I know some, I'm sure there's going to be some Kerry Mayo and Tyrone fans and some opposition fans that will straight away say, no, you are incorrect. You are incorrect because there was this moment that happened, blah, blah, blah. But the noise of the ball hitting the back of the net and the roar, was just incredible it really is it almost makes me emotional speaking about it it was just uh oh it was unbelievable richie hennehan says you terrified me on more than one occasion a joy to watch congrats on a great career and all the best in your retirement bernard flynn says what an incredible impact you had on the game of gaelic football you were an absolute joy to watch you played the game uh, the way you played the game best wishes with everything going forward in the future michael darren mccauley he says ah quivine say it ain't so 
only Jeebus knows how that decade would have looked without you. The whole of Dublin owes you a Guinness. Enjoyed them. Some bouquet to get you out of that hole or out of a hole. Yeah, I mean, I think Kevin Mack, you know, he deserves the keys to the city, doesn't he? You know, he, you know, he, he deserves the keys to the city, and he deserves, he deserves a few free Guinnesses. You know, I, I think that's that's fair. Uh, I think he deserves a lot of a free. Um, he deserves whatever he wants. To be honest with you. Um, an icon, a legend, and you know if um, the only kind of problem for Kevin McManaman is there's been so many legends for Dublin over the past ten years. You know, like I'm sure that there might be a statue of uh, of Stephen Cluxon maybe somewhere outside Parnell Park. I don't think they'd put it outside Crow Park because I think that would probably wind a lot of opposition fans up. But um, you know, well, you know, there there definitely should be a mural of Kevin McManaman in the city. There's one of Jim Gavin. Um, and I think a, a mural of Kevin McManaman would be would be brilliant. Um, and I'd I'd gladly be there when that happened. To be honest, Bernard Brogan says my favorite player as a Dubs fan, but more importantly, phenomenal human being and a mate for life. And his brother Alan says the city will be forever grateful. What a contribution! Mayo G A Banter. They've uh, released a tweet here as well. They say Dublin's Kevin McManaman announces retirement from inter county football this morning. What a career the St Jude's club man has had, Kevin. Nicknamed the Kerry Killer, spent his summers in Ackle Island as a child and is also a cousin of Colm McManaman and Jason Doherty. Yeah, he does have uh, Mayo relations, a lot like a lot of Dublin players, don't they? A lot of Dublin players have Mayo and, and Galway rela- relations and whatnot. Um, you know, and just like a lot of people in Dublin because a lot of um, people from the countryside emigrated to, uh, to Dublin for work, you know, um, and that's probably why Dublin has such a, a high population. Oh, we're going, we're going into dodgy territory, we won't, we won't discuss this, but. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, what what a man, you know, and and as, as as it says there, look, I'm sure a lot of Mayo fans will be, you know, relieved that they're, they're not going to see him coming off the bench one last time, you know, there's a part, there's the romantic in me that would love to see, you know, Kevin Mack just have one last hurrah coming off the bench, maybe he kicks the winner or something like that. Whoa, what's going on here? Well, that was a disaster. I guess my camera doesn't want that to happen. Um, but yeah, one last hurrah for Kevin McManaman. I mean, that would be that would be fairy tale stuff. But of course, there isn't always fairy tales in sport. We know that. But um, you know, he obviously went away with the Olympic boxing team last year. What a huge opportunity for him! And you know, I'm sure he's probably going to be more involved with that. Uh, be interesting to see what he does next as well. Could we ever see him going into coaching or, or management or maybe even punditry? That would be great to see as well. But uh, we'll see what happens with, with Kevin Mack. No doubt about it. Um, and yeah, just a, a video on my reaction, my thoughts, my uh, discussion around this and some different tweets and, and discussion around it as well. As I said before, like as a Dublin fan, Kevin McManaman, like one of one of the all-time greats, one of the um, servants of Dublin football that would be remembered as far as time goes, in my opinion. Um, and look, you know, will he be missed in 2021 for the Dublin senior footballers? I'm sure the fans will miss him, no doubt about it. I think for Dublin football in general, though, and certainly there will be a discussion for another day um, in terms of Dublin football, but they do need to be looking towards the, some of the younger lads to be coming through and, and making a difference coming off the bench. Um, the likes of your Kieran Archers, Lorcan O'Dell, Ross McGarry, whatnot, these kind of lads need to be stepping up, coming off the bench, making a, a difference for the dubs. But um, for Kevin Mack, look, he, he doesn't need to do any more as a Dublin man. He's done... He's done all he has had to do. He's done all he's needed to do. So, yeah, Kevin McManaman retires. What a legend. What a hero. My name is Aaron anyway. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. And um, I'll see you all later.